This isn't going to work well. <laughs> it's fun. If you're thinking about getting into model railroading or you're already an addict, boy, do we got a project for you. In this episode, we're going to... Oh yeah, baby. And it all starts right now. Hey, welcome to my hobby room and to the Brownsmith Railroad. Boy, are we gonna have some fun today. I cannot wait to show you what I got done since the last time we were together. But before we do, a smidge of housekeeping. First of all, I just want to welcome all of our new subscribers to the channel. Picked up a whole lot lately. Don't know what it's about, but I love it. So make sure you say hi and check in in the comments. And of course, thanks to all of our faithful subscribers who've been with us for nearly a year and a half. At this point, get her done. Second little piece of housekeeping is this. One last time, I'm gonna remind you, Track Smack, our live talk show, has moved to its own channel, the Track Smack channel. You're gonna find a link in that description. Make sure you head over there if you're into that kind of thing. But what I'm into right now is getting to work on Fertile Valley. We are gonna mix up some sculpt mold We are going to apply it to the layout. Now, this took me about four hours to do. Okay, so I'm not gonna make a four hour video for you. I'm gonna take you through the highlights, kind of show you my technique. Hopefully there's something you can pick up. And again, go down into the comments. You're gonna see a lot of other people making their suggestions, their recommendations, showing you their tips. So it's really gonna be an exciting episode. Hope you stick around to the end. And other than that, I say we get to work right now. All right, just before we really get rolling, if you'll remember at the end of last episode, I told you I was gonna go back make some more modifications, uh, fine tune this thing a little bit, and I have done that. So what I'd like to do, give you a quick tour of where we're at, and then we will actually get to work. First thing, you'll notice I came back in here and I added these bigger shapes in the back to give some more mass back there to kind of get rid of this sort of cut off cliff kind of thing I had going. I think this way I can mold the sculpt to mold around it, um, blend it down into a scree. I think it's gonna look pretty good. Then over where the speed bump was. Remember last time I had this uh, purple speed bump in the middle of my landscape? It wasn't working for me, baby. So what I did is I went through and I shaved off the top of it, kind of fine-tuned that a little bit. Then I added some pieces of white styrofoam next to it that I'll be able to use to sort of blend all that in. I hope that's at least what we're going to try to do. Then down here in the front, something we didn't talk about last time, but I did this time, is where the road is, where the orchard's going to go. I went through and I shaped that uh, foam board to have more of a belled edge, kind of a rocky looking thing. I don't know, we'll see how it looks. Uh, this piece over here where the little hillside's gonna be and stuff. Um, got all that done and then did a little bit of shaping on where the road's gonna join from uh, the old logging camp module up to this module. So anyway, that's kind of the lay of the land. I may think of something else as we move forward, but speaking of moving forward, I say we do that right now. The next thing I'm gonna do is get my masking tape out and tape over my track and roadbed because here's the deal, people. I am famous for spilling junk where I don't want it. So I'm gonna cover all that with masking tape just in case a little errant piece of sculpt mold gets down on there somewhere. I'm not gonna damage the track. So let's get on that and then let's mix up some sculpt mold and turn this into a big white wedding cake. All right, so I went through and I got all that masking tape on top of that track. Now, here's the deal. I'm not gonna even get close to that track with the masking tape on it for now. Now, that may sound backwards, but here's the deal. I wanna get all the uh, wholesale installation of the sculpt mold done. Then I wanna pull that tape off and get down close next to the roadbed and stuff. We're gonna spend a little bit more time on that. Uh, hopefully, I won't get anything on the rails and ties, but we can't do anything if we don't mix up some sculpt mold, which is what we're going to do right now. So let me introduce to you my friend, sculpt mold. Now here's the thing. There's all kinds of ways to do this, people. Okay, um, and we've had some good suggestions in last week's video, good comments 
on uh, what to do in a situation like this. I'd recommend you take a look at those comments. You might pick up a tip or two, but I've been using Sculpt the Mold for a while now, and I, I just like it. I'm used to it. I'm comfortable with it. I don't really feel like pushing the envelope on this. When I get over behind the coal mine and stuff, this is going to be very tough, and I'm going to probably use uh, shaper sheets, um, maybe even some plaster cloth, stuff like that. But for now, this is going to get the job done. So there is the Sculpt the Mold. Most of you already know, but just in case there's a couple of new people here, Sculpt the Mold is basically a little bit of plaster, a little bit of paper, and it's all ground up into this sort of fibrous powder. And you mix water with it, and you put it on, and it dries, and it looks totally awesome. So there's the Sculpt the Mold. This is what I'm going to mix it in. This is actually the Volume by Mixed Nut container. We eat a lot of nuts around here, so I took one of these, cut it off so I can mix it up in there nicely. But then when I'm done, I can just throw this away. I don't really need to try to salvage it. I used to use like a bowl and stuff and then I'd forget. And then I'd have like sculpt the bowl, dry it in the bowl. Cindy Brown, the first lady model railroading, not so happy with that option. Very pleased with this one. So that's what I'm gonna mix it in. And then we got ourselves a little cup of water right here. Yep, because you need the water to mix it. And then one thing different that I am gonna do this time that you haven't seen me do before is boom, I'm going to use gloves <laughs> because here's the thing. Um, the way I do it, I do it with my hands. I've, I've tried using like tools and stuff to spread it. It just takes too long and I can't get the look I'm after. So I like to use my hands, but what I don't like is when I get all that goop down in the cuticles and my fingers and everything is washing it off takes forever. So the gloves, put them on, put that on, take the gloves off and I'm done. And it's totally awesome. So let me get this other glove on here. And we will begin the mixing process by grabbing the sculpt the mold first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just stick my big man hands in there, grab me a handful of this and drop it in my little mixer bowl thinger here like that. Here, let's turn it this way so you can see it. Why advertise the nuts? We don't need to. So there you go. <coughs> That's what it looks like in the mixer thinger. And then I don't really know exactly how much water to use. So we just put some in. Like that, we start mixing it up, mixing it up like this, just mixing it up. And it's pretty powdery, so we'll put some more in, like that. And the uh, illustration everyone uses is to make this look like cottage cheese when you're done. Now, if you don't know what cottage cheese looks like, you're really going to be in trouble when it comes to sculpt molding. So anyway, mixing it up, mixing it up. Make sure you get all the dry stuff on the bottom mixed in with the mass. I think I could use some more water in there. And if you get too much water in this thing, I've noticed that um, you just start working with it and then it starts sort of setting up and then it gets thicker and then you can play around with it. It's, I've had luck with it being pretty forgiving over time. So this looks less like cottage cheese and more like the fact that I just, uh, I just kind of squished up some tuna here. Look at that. There you go. Isn't that good stuff? All right, so there you go. Now we're going to take this over and put it on the mountains. All right, so just to get rolling, I think where we'll start is right back up here at the top. And just sort of squish this stuff on without necessarily worrying about it being perfect to start. See that? See that? Huh? That's why we got masking tape on this sucker. Get all over the track if we're not careful. Kind of like that. See how it's just sort of all of a sudden it's taking a shape that didn't look like big pieces of styrofoam. Dropped another one. Oh, dropped a piece of styrofoam as well. It's hard to see from that camera, but I'm trying to get it back on top back there too. Even though, frankly, I don't think anyone's ever going to see it. Just keep smoothing it on like I'm doing. See that? See how it's starting to look more mountainous and less styrofoamous? This is awesome. I'm having a good time now. All right, we're just gonna keep this train running and get her done.
and bring it right down to the tunnel portal, but try not to cover up that styrofoam in the front because that's where the tunnel portal goes. Make sure we can get to it. Some of these bumps and some of this unevenness that you see, we're going to take care of as it sets up. We just add water and keep troweling over it with our hands and we can get a pretty good look. But that top piece looks like it's starting to set up a little bit. So here's an idea. You take a little water and just gently start rubbing it and it turns kind of slimy and starts smoothing out. And you know, it depends on what you're trying to get. You're trying to get a lot of texture. You won't do so much of this. You're trying to get it nice and smooth like I am. And then uh, just smooth it on there. When we get down to some of the front of it and I do this again, you're gonna uh, get a better shot of it. All right, actually I had to go take me a little break because my, uh, my right shoulder was killing me from reaching back in here like this. Uh, keep that in mind. That's a little insider tip for you that you're not going to get just anywhere. But anyway, as you can see, I'm still doing the same process. Uh, putting it on, trying to blend it how I want to blend it. Ultimately coming back and um, getting it wet. Running my fingers across it to smooth it out. But for now, we're just trying to get all these gaps filled in. Get some basic shapes. This area back here is starting to set up and it's still bumpy and I'm not happy with that. So what I do is I've got my container here. I mix the sculpt mold in. It's got a little bit of sculpt mold still in it, but I got a lot of water in it. Just take my hand, get it wet like we were doing. And that additional sculpt mold kind of gets slimy on there. It helps fill in all those imperfections I'm trying to get rid of. Smooth down the bumpy spots. So I'm going to point out at this juncture too, this is uh, not too exact of a science. I'm getting this, this very close to what I think I want, but if it's not exact, that's where we get some ground cover and start camouflaging some stuff and really bring it to life. At least that's been my experience in the past. We'll see what it looks like this time around. And now, my friends, we're making the speed bump go away. Watch this transformation you're about to see, people. Good thing I taped over my tracks, huh? One thing I'll share with you that I've never experienced before is I'm using the same container to mix this sculpt mold up in over and over again. And unfortunately, there's little pieces of it now that are dry in there that are sort of coming out in what I'm doing right here. And uh, it's a little awkward, to say the least. Um, I'm trying to smush them into places here and there to fill voids. But come the end of the day, some of them I just have to reach in and pull out. Like, there's one right there. Let's throw it on the floor. All right, well, I decided I'm gonna take a little bit of a break because reaching back in there for that length of time uh, is like making my shoulder really tired. It took me meh, about two hours to go through and sculpt and mold everything you see back there, but gotta tell you, the uh, shapes and the sculpting of the terraforming uh, really looks good to me. I'm pretty happy with it. So what I'm gonna do now is go through and get this whole section done probably another two hours and uh we're gonna make that work well also when i get up to here i'll be able to give you a better view of that sort of slick it down sculpt mold thing that i'm doing so uh, i'm gonna just run off and do this right now if there's something cool i'll show it to you 
If not, I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. So with all this white, it's kind of hard to make out the detail, I think, but you can sort of see it's all pitted right there, I think. And what I'll do is I got my hand wet and I just go through and just start scrubbing around, filling in holes when I see them, just by going quickly across them like that. And eventually, it gets all slimy on top and it really starts smoothing it out. Now, you, don't, you can go as little or as much as you want. It all depends on the look you're going for. I'm trying to go for something a little rustic, but yet still um, smooth. So you can sort of see it's sort of taking shape right there. I'll tell you, once we get the paint on this thing, it's really going to look obvious what we did here. But I just keep going through and slowly but surely getting that slimy plaster to take out the pits and whatnot. Unless you want the pits, then do whatever you're gonna do. I'm gonna keep working. Well, there you go, Rail fans. That is four hours out of my life that was well worth the investment. Look at this. Remember when it was just like different kinds of styrofoam, all these funky shapes and whatnot, and now it's got some character. It's got some, almost some realism. Whoa, from my hobby room, realism? Yeah, it can happen. So what's next to do is let all this dry and then paint it and start adding grass and dirt and trees and animals and whatever, and then move over to the orchard. Can't wait to get started on it. And there you go, Rail fans. Totally awesome. Fertile Valley is just chucking right along. You know something? I looked up the uh, videos for Fertile Valley and realized the uh, last one I made, other than last week, was four months ago. What was I thinking? This is so much fun. It's turning out so cool, and I'm really digging it. So hopefully you're digging it, too. You know, you may have been noticing that I got some backdrops up, and I got them painted. And I did that as part of a Model Railroader Video Plus episode. Next week, I'm going to give you sort of a recap of what I did just ahead of getting back on, oh, getting this going. Something else about the Fertile Valley project here. The tunnel portals don't fit anymore. <laughs> the sculptable made everything a little too fat. But that's kind of what I wanted. I just didn't want it to be this bad. So I'm going to go through next week. We're going to shave that down, make sure those tunnel portals fit in really snug, look good, and then we'll start painting and doing all the other stuff. But that will be next week. Thank you for joining me this time on It's My Railroad. I sure had a ton of fun. Hope you had a ton of fun watching the show. And until next time, my name is Steve Brown. Rail on, my friends. <laughs>